Chicos, ¿cómo están? Qué placer. Bien, ¿y tú? Bien, bien. Bien, gracias. bien. Óiganme. Oh, sorry, let me change the ship. Guys, what a new season. That's going to be amazing. How do you feel? It's the only Latin history in the Anglo screen. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, huh? we, you know, very proud, very proud of it, very um, blessed to be part of the opportunity. And, and, um, and not just that, you know, I mean, I, I you know, it's, it's, I, we definitely feel the responsibility of, of uh, telling the story as Latinos. Um, but, you know, for, for us as well, we're just telling a great story. You know, this is, um, this is a great show. It's a great story this season. Um, has so much heart, so much pain, so much joy, so much conflict, so much action. Um, it's a thrill ride. It's just, it's great entertainment. And for me, what I'm proud of is that regardless of your ethnicity or who you are, it's a, it's, it's a show that, that uh, you, can, you can really enjoy and, and be a part of. Yes, Clayton, did you know that JD was part of a, of a gun? I have heard this story, yes. Yes. That was scary game. Very scary. Very scary out here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I hear that. We don't talk about it. That's how scary it is. That's how <laughs> scary it is. We don't talk about it. <laughs> we want to take care of the reputation of the boy, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Agreed. Yeah, of course. Golden boy. Of course. <laughs> Guys, um, we were talking about uh, with um, Danny and Carla. We were talking about the stories of the frontier the south side of the frontier. Mm. And you you are deep in that world because it's three seasons. You, you must learn something. You must change in somehow after learning about the stories and the reality that face in that side of the country. How, how, how has been for you this, this path? Well, for me, you know, are, are we talk, we're, so we're speaking about Mexico, right? Like what we've yeah, learned, yeah, you know, because yeah. we, we've had to, as, as actors, we've had to film down there, I want to say three or four times now. And, and it's interesting the juxtaposition of each part, like certain parts of the country, how it could go from, it seems so structured to, to not well put together. And that was so jarring. To me. I was not aware of that. I was so, I was taken back. I was sad. I, I felt, um, kind of ashamed that I wasn't well versed on this enough, you know, it made me want to learn more about it myself as Clayton. Um, and it was, but at the same time, you know, we would go into these parts of town and, you know, even if they were poor and run down, they don't, you know, obviously they don't see it like that. Right. And, but just the amount of love, um, the amount of pride that they had for their country and for the area that they lived in, was outstanding. I was taken back by it. I was like, wow, I haven't, I, I personally, I was like, you can never complain again. There's nothing to complain about. Look how a different part of the world, or not too far from you, but look how a different part of the world from you is living and nobody's complaining. This is a way of life, happy, going about their business. So it was kind of like a reality check for me. I really had to take a step back, kind of humble myself and really educate myself at the same time. JD, you both are, um, your roots are from immigrants. How do you feel, how different do you feel than others? Because immigrants' uh, parents can want to teach you to be proud of uh, your roots or your language or your traditions, but you grow up here. How, how, how different are you or the other kids in the, in the town? Well, you definitely feel like um, you, you feel like you're living in two worlds, so to speak. Um, you know, my parents, my father came here from Argentina. My mom came from El Salvador. So um, that is our culture, you know, and, you know, we would go to family gatherings and listen to Bolivian music. And then I would go to school and um, on the street, everybody thought, you know, they called me white boy. And um, you know, and then when I went to a private school of, with white people, they, they call me Mexican. So, you know, you, you definitely, it's, it, it's tough. It can be tough, sure. 
Um, and your parents want you to assimilate. You know, my parents wanted me to, they came here for a purpose and that was for the American dream. You know, they wanted to have a family. They wanted us to go to school. They wanted us to have an education, have all the upper op uh, other opportunities that they weren't able to have in Argentina or El Salvador. And, um, and so there's a responsibility uh, to that and to play that. And I think that what I love about this show is that it, it includes all types of Latinos. You know, we, we all, the biggest mistake is everyone thinks we're the same, but we, we, we have the same heart, we have the same blood, um, but we, we come from different, different places. It's like you said, you know, some really want to harness that culture and, and keep it alive here in America. And then there are others who are like, hey, you'll have an easier time if you assimilate and if you become American. So it's definitely interesting. And, and I just think it um, maybe just makes me unique. I've learned to use it. I, I've growing up, I thought it was something that held me back, but um, growing up now as a man, I've, I've embraced all of it. I'm everything. That's cool. Great. The bikes, did you learn because of this or you knew how to, to drive a bike before? No, 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 no. I did not know how to ride a bike. I know how to ride a bicycle. Um, but a motorcycle was a whole other beast. Um, there's videos, um, there's some behind the scene videos of me trying to learn how to ride the bike very beginning. This is a pre-production of season one. And there's, I, a lot, but, the whole, by the way, I'm not the only one to fall off this bike. Okay. So regardless of me, I don't want to put myself under the bus. A lot of us yeah. fell down. This guy, maybe, um, but I am the only one that almost drove into a semi truck, a park semi truck. Yeah, and just the look yeah. of fear on the video, you yeah. see the look of fear on the guy's faces. Oh my God, I thought my life was over. Yeah, Clay um, was almost no mass. That's what- No mass, that, but these things no are like almost a thousand pounds. These things are a thousand pounds, you know? So it's like having, once you feel the, the power and the roar of it, it's intimidating. I was very intimidated by it. But now, you know, a lot of us, we have our own bikes, um, getting customized bikes, riding around town like it's nothing. But again, obviously, in the beginning was a very, uh, uh, was very afraid. I'll tell you that. You too, JD? Or was oh, yeah. it for you? I've dropped the bike. Yeah, you know, I think, I think we all had our moments with that bike. You know, and I, I think what's comforting for me, actually, it was scary in the beginning because you hear around bike culture, they say, you're gonna fall. You're, you're yeah. gonna drop your bike. It's, a, it's not a matter of, of uh, if you're gonna drop it, it's a matter of when you're gonna drop it. And so for me, I think I, I'm lucky enough that I dropped it on my first day of filming. And once I got that out of the way, I felt like, okay, that's, you um, gotta respect the bike. You gotta respect it. It's, it's a machine, um, you can hurt yourself. Um, so we really focused on, uh, learning how to ride and, um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, I and Monica, I feel like I ride you know what, what you do, JD is great, by the way, he's, he's amazing on the bike now, we all um, are. but you know, we all are, but you know, it, we should have known right from the beginning. They told us, our instructor told us, you know, to how to dress and they were like, dress for the, the slide, not for the ride, you know, dress for the crash. Don't dress for looking cool on the bike. So, like, we should have known right then, right? You should have known right from that. Like, you're, you're expected to fall. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm almost five feet, and I always want to to ride a Harley Davidson. But I think right. I'm thinking about it twice. Well, one, yeah. one day, one day we're gonna have to put you on the yeah. back. Yeah. 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 Oh, you gotta think of it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun. And he's recorded. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I ask him all the time. He never offers me that. Yeah. That's... Yeah. You can come. You can get a ride too, baby. Yes. Guys, um, what was the one thing that you live in the childhood that changed your life and you don't go, oh, you don't going to forget? Mm. Me as a person or, or as easy? No, as a person. Mm. Oh, wow. Something that you live in the childhood. Something. Wow. I don't know. That's, a, that's, that's. I'll say something. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it real quick. Yeah. Um, you know, as a child, I was, uh, I was unfortunately left alone a lot and I spent a lot of time alone. And, um, I always like that always really bothered me. And, um, 
and it affected me. I thought in my adolescence, into my teenagers, into my adult and early adult years. But now as a grown man, I enjoy my solace with so much love now. I feel like I I learned the most when I'm by myself. I learned the most when I learned something on my own and I'm, it's not taught to me, it's experienced by me. You know, I go through it. I, I have an understanding, I have my own understanding of it, not somebody else's understanding of it. So I've learned to really, um, not beat myself up for those moments where I had to be alone as a child and I've really learned to enjoy it as an adult. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, <clears throat> I think growing up now, like being a man and having my own family and, and uh, just being so passionate about the art of acting and storytelling, I really look back to my childhood and I, I see that as a child, you know, it, it's funny when I drive around now and I see the billboards and I see the posters and I see the promos for Mayans, I, I think of my parents. Um, it's hard, you know, uh, sometimes families have a hard time. We had a hard time. You know, my parents had a hard time. Uh, my dad was a police officer, a Marine. He was constantly gone. Eventually my parents got divorced and my mother to, to protect us from all that emotional uh, stress would take us to the movies. And I, I, I fell in love with, with storytelling. I fell in love with Dr. Shivago or Casablanca or Gone with the Wind. I, I, it, it, it brought me into this fantasy world and it affected me in such a way where I just, I related to it. I, I saw life through it and, and I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to, to tell that. Um, so I, I think that, you know, I, I just think of my parents. I think of, uh, I think of my mother and how she really, um, she gave me something. She gave me something to put my energy into. It's amazing. Okay, last question. This season, I hear this season is going to be very emotional because the writers are digging in your, in your back, in your past. How do you feel about it? How, how challenging was this for you as an actor, for both of you? Well, you know, I think... Um, for Angel, it's been, um, I think it's been very emotional the first two seasons regardless, but I think more and so into this third, going into this third season, you get to see more of a darker version of him. You know, I think he finally, he's putting his energy into um, con what's considered more negative aspects of life, you know, multiple women, alcohol, and he's really drowning himself in that, you know? So to, for me as a most easy actor, it's, it's kind of challenging to stay in that place as an actor especially when we're doing uh, what block shooting is, right? We're doing a lot of the same type of scenes in the same location all day long. So we're talking 12 hours and you're sitting in this character's uh, necessary, well, you know, filth in a sense. You're, you're sitting in this angst and, and, and kind of torturing himself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been challenging. Uh, it's been challenging to let it go, especially when you're heading home, you know, for, for myself only. Um, so that, that, that's been the biggest challenge, but I love it. Monica, you know, like you, as a as a actor, you can only dream for having characters like this that go this deep, you know, and especially with a or great arc, you know, with the, with this going to this depth, you know, what these characters are going to have a beautiful arc. So again, that's Elgin James, and that's his writing, and he just writes these beautifully nuanced characters from top to bottom of the call sheet. So I'm very honored, even regardless of, you know. If it uh, takes a toll on my emotional life, uh, I love it. I love it. For you too? Yeah, I, I you know, the, it's, it is, this is an emotional, emotional season and you should be affected by it. I know I am. Um, and I, I think that that's what I love about this season is that we were able to really dive into some very real, um, painful and, and truths of life. And, you know, for me, look, it, it's, it's, um, is it difficult? Yeah, it's hard, it's tough. And, um, you know, you, you, you learn as a professional not to take it with you. Um, and I think that the pandemic, experiencing the pandemic, experiencing COVID, seeing 
the effect that it had on the world really put all of it in perspective for me as far as acting is what I love to do. Um, but it's not life, you know, life is your family, you know, my, my, my wife, my children, um, relationships, my friendships with, with Clayton and these other artists, and we are coming together to tell a story. And so we sacrifice, we put ourselves in that because we love it. And just recognizing that, that, um, that it's, it's what we love to do. And it's also our responsibility to entertain people and it's a job. So it's all those things. And um, just very grateful, very, I feel very grateful and, and thankful just to be a part of this amazing season, which is going to, I think really blow people away. You know, people are going to be excited. They're gonna be engaged. They're gonna relate. They're gonna laugh. They're gonna cry with the characters. And, um, and it's, it's going to lift them up and be soul crushing at the same time. I'm glad to be a part of it. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. I will Thank spend you. the whole night talking with you, but we need to. Thank you, Monica. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Monica.